Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can all hear me. Um, I'm just checking if you the sound is okay. 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 Thank you very much. So. Uh, I'm very pleased to present uh, all of you Vitor Vasconcelos. Uh, Vitor is a full professor of the Faculty of Science of the University of Porto. He's a senior researcher at CIMAR, the Interdisciplinary Center of Marine and Environmental Research in the University of Porto. He's also the president of the board. Um, his uh, research team on uh, blue biotechnology and ecotoxicology studies He's focused on natural toxins and other bioactive substances and their effects or on environmental and human health. He has over 25 years of experience in natural toxins and in recent years, he has also been working on the study of emergent marine toxins. Vitor Vasconcelos is also board member of the European Marine Board. Um, he's been working also in blue biotechnology, especially unraveled new bioactive molecules extracted from marine microorganisms with pharmacological allelopathic and antifoling applications. So I'm sure you'll be very interested in knowing and hearing about this potential of marine organisms that he'll be uh, uh, telling us. Uh, so, Vitor, the floor is yours. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Luisa, for the presentation. I want to thank also the organizing committee for inviting CIMAR to be here. I will be uh, sharing some ideas with you about the aspects of ocean and human health. I want to thank all the, the, the colleagues that are here presentially, but also all of you that are attending this session on a virtual way. So uh, I divided my presentation in five moments. These five moments correspond to different aspects of the way we see the ocean. I will start talking about how we came from the ocean. Then I will uh, unravel some aspects related to the uses of the ocean, how we are degrading the ocean, how the ocean is fighting back, how is responding to this uh, impact that we are uh, thriving. And then finally, uh, how we need to have a clean and healthy ocean so as to have also uh, health for the human population. So this will be a general presentation regarding the aspects of CIMA research. And in this last moment, I will talk about several projects that CIMAR has in the different uh, um, aspects of, of, of the ocean and, and human health. Of course, that uh, I believe that most of you and most of us uh, believe that the life began in the ocean, except for those that believe that it comes from Mars or from some other planet. But in fact, the more than 4 billion years ago, life starts in the ocean in an environment much similar to the one that you see in this slide that is nowadays seen in the um, vents uh, in the middle of the ocean close to, a, to the Azores. And in fact, the evolution of life led to the formation of organisms in special cyanobacteria that created these stromatolites, these structures that were responsible for the production of the first uh, molecules of oxygen. And they are nowadays still very important in the production of the ocean. It's believed that more than 50% of the oxygen we breathe nowadays comes from the ocean. And in fact, this evolution of the life uh, that started in the ocean, as I mentioned, more than uh, 4 billion years ago, um, mentions, and in this slide you can see, that humans are in the very late part of this evolution. So we are very recent uh, species in this planet, but we are the one that are causing more damage to the planet. And in fact, I would say that in a few million years, humans will not be here anymore, but bacteria and some other small microorganisms will be. And in fact, 
the human population spread all over the world. We, we made very large migrations. We were able to conquer the world. And nowadays, it's impressive the way that we uh, inhabit these large cities of millions and millions of uh, individuals. And uh, it, it's not, uh, I would say, coincidence that most of these cities are by a river or by the ocean. So the impact that we pose in the ocean is more and more uh, preeminent. And in fact, we use the ocean in many, many ways. Um, of course, when we think about uses of the ocean, we think about recreation, we think about beaches. This is a photo of this summer here in Matuzinhos Beach, where people were eager to, again, experience the, the, the conditions of the ocean and the conditions that this uh, way of living by the sea offer us in terms of well-being, in terms of health. But of course, we are eager to understand a bit more of the um, interior part of the ocean. And so the diversity that we can find in many of these environments um, push us to um, visit the ocean either by scuba diving or by snorkeling or by other means of uh, activities in the ocean. And so we are naturally uh, forced to um, explore the ocean in a way that nowadays the ocean is the major um, means of transportation of goods. Uh, you can see in this slide that the global shipping routes are extensive. Uh, it's very impressive to see what happens between Europe and, and the United States. And this means that whenever we uh, have this intensive use of the ocean via uh, shipping, uh, there is, of course, an impact, and we will see that in, in, in the few slides. Of course, we also exploit the ocean for energy purposes uh, nowadays, and uh, we are having the COP26 conference at this time. We are thinking about decreasing the use of uh, um, fuel fossils that come from the ocean. And of course, this is from one side an exploitation that is costly, but at the same time, it causes impacts as, as we'll, we'll talk later. But of course, we are now thinking a, a bit further. We are thinking about renewable uh, ocean energies. And in Portugal, we have, uh, I would say, two cases that are starting to be a, a success. These floating uh, platforms of wind energy offshore uh, Viana do Castelo, and the, the floating uh, platform that you see on the, on the left that is dedicated to um, the wave energy. Uh, and these are examples of the ways that we need to use more and more and the ways that we need to change our uh, ocean energy paradigm. Of course, that now we are also thinking about other ways of exploiting the ocean, namely the uh, minerals in the bottom of the ocean. This is still in the very early process, but of course, this will lead also to very important impacts. Most of them, we don't know yet what they will be, and probably they will be very strong. So I would say this is one activity that we should be very cautious about. But we exploit the ocean uh, for many centuries. This is an example of the exploitation of macroalgae in the north of Portugal that is now in misuse, is not so used anymore for the um, harvesting of macroalgae for agricultural purposes. And of course, this is not an activity with a large impact because most of these are algae that are thrown to the shore. Fishing is also important, as you know, in Portugal, we consume a lot of fish. And in the past few years, fishing is being more or less, uh, I would say, stabilized, as you can see in this graph. And of course, aquaculture is uh, increasing. And of course, we need to increase aquaculture in order to uh, feed a growing population, especially in terms of fish feed. And this has been done uh, in, in, in the past years, uh, especially in, in European waters, uh, quite close to us in, in Vigo, using this uh, bateas where they produce mussels and mussels are fetal feeders. So this is a, an activity that does not increase the impact or the negative impact of the aquaculture in, 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 the, in the sea. And of course, in Portugal, we are now giving the first steps in terms of offshore aquaculture, like this case in Madeira. And of course, nowadays, aquaculture can be sustainable 
can be less impactful in terms of environment. And in CIMAR, we are working heavily in these aspects in order to produce healthy food for an healthy environment. But of course, we also use the ocean to dump sewage. This is a, a problem because nowadays, in spite of having the ocean, uh, the, the sewage treatment plants installed, the problem is that uh, the treatment is not completely effective. So uh, whenever we dump even treated uh, sewage, they will cause an impact. And of course, there will be then a response from the ocean to this impact. And in fact, we are degrading more and more the ocean. Now we are realizing that before we didn't, because we thought that the huge amount of water that there is in the ocean would be enough to dilute any uh, uh, contaminants we should dump in the ocean. But in fact, that is not the truth. Although we think, and uh, when we see the, 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 the earth from the space, we see many times a blue um, planet. In fact, when we think about the amount of water that we have in the planet, and you see here in this, in this uh, slide, you see that the amount of water that covers the, the ocean, comprising the marine water, but also the water in the glaciers, is represented by that uh, small sphere. And then probably in your, in your uh, computers, you can see a smaller sphere, which is the ocean, the, the water that is frozen in the Antarctica and the Arctic, and then a very, very small uh, bowl, which is the fresh water that we can use from lakes and rivers. And when we see the water in this perspective, we see that in fact, it's a, a scarce resource. It's not a huge resource in our planet because it covers just a thin layer of our planet, of our crust. And in fact, we are impacting the ocean a lot uh, because of course, overfishing is one of the aspects and overfishing led to the production of uh, catches that usually comprise smaller and smaller fish. Whenever we catch too much of the bigger fish, then they will not be able to reproduce and then we will be uh, at the end catching the smaller fish and eventually the jellyfish will take over. And if we don't do anything in terms of the recovery of the health of the oceans, eventually we will have only jellyfish to eat. And of course, that is not very pleasant, especially for those of us who like fish and shellfish so much. Of course, um, the activities that I mentioned before in terms of oil exploitation can lead to disasters. Many of them, we don't know them because they are far from the shore. And so the impact does not reach us. And we only can understand that when we have impacts in marine life and this marine life reaches the shore. And in this case, of course, we had in the recent years, several uh, stories, very sad stories about the impact of the ocean, of the, of the oil spills. And uh, another aspect that we should think about is the plastics. The plastics are a huge problem in the ocean and it's not needed to have a dramatic figure like this one. Uh, we know nowadays that there are at least five gigantic plastic gyres in the ocean, which means that there are gigantic islands, floating islands of plastics in the, in the diverse oceans. And of course, this is a problem, not just because we see them, because they are there, but because these plastics also, a long time they can degrade and they can form microplastics. And microplastics are a huge problem, not just because they can be uh, mistaken by aquatic organisms as food. And so zooplankton or fish or shellfish can eat these microplastics, but also because microplastics can uh, attach uh, contaminants. So there could be a, an absorption of contaminants. And whenever we are eating, for instance, shellfish or fish that ate microplastics, they will enter our food chain. And so we will be exposed, not just to the microplastics, but also to the uh, contaminants that are adhering to us. So all these uh, impacts that are, we are giving to the ocean, uh, now we are getting the answers. Now we are getting the way that the ocean is responding to this. Of course, the global warming affects the ocean because the, um, 
there is a, a problem of melting of the of the glaciers and melting of the ice caps of both Arctic and the Antarctic, and this causes, of course, problems for the uh, organisms that live there, but also the cities that are near shore. Of course, this is a, a science fiction image of, of, of New York uh, and that we can see in movies, but nowadays we are seeing this in countries, especially in the Indian Ocean and in the Pacific, where uh, a small rise of the ocean level can lead to the disappearance of whole countries. And this is a problem that is happening now, okay? And it's, this is not that far from us. We can see in our shore, in our coastline, this is close here to, to Matuzinhos in Ispozend, where we can see how the ocean is taken, is the land, and how we have to face this, uh, this problem. Uh, we have to adapt to, this, to these problems because the ocean uh, is, is not going back if we don't do the measures that will have a last um, uh, effectivity. And of course, when we dump the, 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 the plastics in the ocean, the ocean fights back and dumps the plastics against us. So this is a very severe problem. Most of the plastics that appear in our beaches are coming from terrestrial origin. So most of them go uh, to the ocean via the rivers and the estuaries. So we have to think about reducing plastics, reducing the utilization of single plastics. And finally, measures are being taken uh, to this uh, aspect. Of course, some of this contamination is uh, invisible, like heavy metal contamination. We only see it <clears throat> when we buy tuna fish or salmon or swordfish and realize how heavy they can be contaminated in heavy metals, in mercury, for instance. So this is a problem that is not just local, but is global because many of these contaminants by, via magnification, by a magnification, they can travel hundreds or thousands of kilometers from the source. So this is a heavy problem. And then finally, two examples from the biological side, invasive species. We are creating conditions, especially by global warming and by this uh, increasing of transportation to um, host invasive species that can completely wipe out our, na our native species. And many of these invasive species, of course, do not have an ecological role similar to the ones that we have. And we can see that, especially in terms of the blooms of uh, microorganisms. This was taken here at CIMAR, uh, a bloom of Noctiluca, dinoflagellate. And many times these blooms can be toxic, can cause fish kills, so they can have an impact, and the impact can be very serious. Uh, of course, they can cause fish kills, but they can also cause human kills. So the health of the ocean directly impacts the human health. So we need a clean and healthy ocean so we can have this one health concept completely uh, uh, shift. And for that, uh, the European Union has been working in some uh, agendas, and this was recently launched, Sea, Oceans and Public Health in Europe. It was launched uh, last year. It has three uh, targets that I will show in a few examples how CIMAR is doing in, with these targets. The target, sorry, the target number one relates to sustainable uh, seafood, so related to aquaculture and fisheries. The target number two uh, relates to blue spaces like tourism and well-being, the way we use the ocean and the way we need to, to, to use the ocean for having a well-being and, and, and good life. And then target number three, which is related to marine biotechnology. <clears throat> I think there was one slide missing, but target number one relates to, as I mentioned, to aquaculture and seafood quality. Target number two, oh, <clears throat> oh, sorry, target number one is that sustainable seafood and healthy people. So we want and we need to produce uh, more uh, sustainable uh, seafood, uh, especially via aquaculture, because as I mentioned before, fisheries are stabilizing. Then target number two uh, refers to blue spaces, the concept of the blue gym, the use of the um, marine environment as a, a gym in order to have a, a good life and well-being, and then target number three in terms of marine diversity. 
So Portugal has excellent conditions for that because we have a large sea coast and in the process of extending our continental platform, we will have a huge area to explore and to exploit. And uh, in that sense, I believe that we are well positioned compared to many other countries in Europe and around the world in terms of how we can uh, increase our activities by the ocean without damaging the, 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 the activities and uh, without damaging the life in the ocean. Of course, CIMAR in the last years has been focusing his research and innovation in these three areas that coincident, coincidentally uh, were referred in this recent work of the European Union, global changes in ecosystem services, uh, biology, aquaculture and seafood quality and marine biotechnology. So I, I would say that we are well uh, facing these challenges and we are well prepared because we started to work in these areas some years ago. So we are quite aligned with the European Union strategy for oceans and human health. And so I'm going to give you a few examples of research projects, most of them European. So I'm not focusing on many of, the, of our national projects, but they, they will all deal with these aspects. So in this case, uh, in this project, Futur Mars, we want to use uh, what is called nature-based solutions to uh, deal with the ocean uh, quality in terms of restoration. So it's important to restore damaged environments by using this nature-based solution. The conservation, so knowing the ocean to conserve it. And then of course, the sustainable harvesting. When I mean the harvesting relates to fisheries and other harvesting on the coastal uh, areas. For that, we need tools. And we had this other project called Coral, where we develop sustainable uh, tools for uh, and sensors for the uh, knowledge and exploitation of the ocean. So it's very important because the ocean is so large that we cannot study it directly only. We need nowadays sensors and other tools that enable us to get more data and in that way to know better this, this system. We also develop in this project Marinai, a very interesting system that is patent, where together with other colleagues, we develop a system that not just um, gathers data from the physical and chemistry of the ocean, but also for the first time on, on the biology. So we have not just um, microscopes and image capture uh, elements, but also we can capture uh, DNA from the environment that can complement the data that we will gather in, the, in this, in this uh, species of, of, of sensor. Uh, of course, this uh, is important because we need to understand, for instance, how the marine toxins are spreading in the North Atlantic. I mentioned before when talking about these invasive species that with the global warming and with the increase of shipping routes, we are uh, inoculating in, in our water species that were only common in tropical and subtropical waters. And we need to assess what is the current situation? And this is an European project that aims to do that in the North Atlantic. And at the same time to predict what will be the scenarios under different uh, aspects of global change, especially the increase of, of temperature. The same happens with um, um, oil spills. So in this project, we uh, want not just to unravel novel uh, ways of treating wild spills, but especially give training for those, for instance, that work in harbors or for fishermen that will be the first ones to be on the uh, scenario whenever an oil spill occurs. And so we need to improve the tools in terms of the aspects to support decision making and response to these uh, activities that, as we know, will continue to occur. And another aspect that we are working on is the problem of uh, uh, ghost nets. Many nets that are used by fishermen can be lost during the activities. And when they are lost in the environment, they do, do, do not only contribute to plastic pollution, but they also uh, interfere in terms of continuing fishing 
organisms and killing them because nobody goes there to recover them. And in this project, we develop tagging fishing net gears, which means that whenever uh, 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 one of these nets is lost by GPS, we can tag where it is and we can recover it. So it's a way of preventing the pollution caused by uh, lost nets. Of course, seafood is important and in the seafood tomorrow was a very large project that deemed to create uh, new seafood products on a sustainable way, especially in terms of economy and in terms of environment, because we want to produce products that come from the sea or that can be produced with organisms from the sea that have less impact in terms of environment. And this is very important, not just to control the whole process, but also to control the downstream process, creating new products that are more appealing to the consumers. And this can be done by using, for instance, algae. In this project, Jenny Alge, we created um, and designed cultivation systems that can um, increase the yield of the production of seaweeds. And then in a process of biorefinery, we can have no waste at the end of the process. Uh, and this is very important because this algae can be, for instance, in this case, in this project, marine algae for aqua, we used micro and macro algae as feed ingredients. Um, this is very important because we have to change also the paradigm in terms of feed ingredients for fish, not just using fish ingredients, but use, for instance, micro and macro algae, and nowadays also insects. And this is something that we have to deal more and more because aquaculture products need to be increased. And if we don't cultivate these organisms offshore, or uh, at least in the ocean, we can do it uh, inshore. And in this project, we want to demonstrate the possibility of doing aquaponics by, by uh, producing in the same system, allophyte plants and fish. And so it's also a closed system that will not contribute to contamination of the environment and create two products in the same uh, industry. Of course, that when we have degradation of the marine systems, we can um, recover them by producing, for instance, artificial reefs. And this is the aim of this 3D pair project, where we are creating 3D print artificial reefs to increase the biodiversity in damaged environments. And we are doing this and we are testing this right here off the port of uh, Leixões, where uh, we are uh, um, testing these systems. And I should say that the first results are very promising because the diversity increased right after one month when the reefs were put into the floor uh, of the ocean. And then a few more examples in biotechnology. This project Spillus uses also nature-based solutions, which means that we used uh, bacteria that are native to the coast of Portugal. So we collected bacteria all over the coast of Portugal. We selected those that would feed on oil. So they would be eating oil. And then whenever there is an oil spill in one of these spots, we can go to our library of bacteria, grow them intensively in uh, heterotrophic ways, in fermenters, and then by using these drones or underwater vehicles, we can inoculate them in the, in the spot where the, the, the oil spill was produced with local bacteria, so creating no damage to the environment. And whenever the oil disappears, the bacteria also disappears. So this is another uh, example of nature-based solution. And finally, two examples of projects on biotechnology. In this case, we are using marine cyanobacteria as source of bioactive compounds to reduce obesity. As you know, obesity is one of the most important diseases all over the world. And this uh, cyanobacteria can in fact decrease the, the lipid accumulation. We are using in this case a zebrafish model and another project, uh, No More Film, where we participated and from where a patent was also deposited, we unravel also a new molecule coming from cyanobacteria that prevents the formation of biofilms in an hospital environment. So 
we were looking for bacteria that prevent biofilms in catheters and protheses, which are two of the, of the occasions where infections are more complicated. And in fact, we uh, managed to get one of these molecules and now it's been tested in uh, situations using uh, animals in order to uh, see what will be the best ways of applying these molecules in real situations. So these are a few examples of the way how CIMAR deals with this uh, ocean and human health because they are completely interconnected. Uh, and of course, we should also not forget about ocean literacy because we are dealing and we were talking about um, scientific community, but it's very important that we pass this information in a way that children can understand their parents, their grandparents, because this is an activity that has to be done uh, with the help of everybody. So not only scientists, but also the common citizen. And nowadays, citizen science is a must, and we should uh, encourage everybody to participate in this type of activities. And at CIMAR, we have been doing a lot of effort in this aspect with, I would say, very good results. So to end up, I would say that in order to have this One Health concept applied to the ocean uh, health, we need for sure, and this is the one of my moments and it's the final moment we need a clean and healthy ocean in order to have also a healthy life so i want finally to thank all of you that are here all of you that are attending the the conference from your uh, computers and of course the projects that have been supporting me and my team especially not just my research team but the, the whole cmar team because this is a continuous collaborative effort so thank you very much. Thank you, Vitar. Um, thank you for your attention. Uh, you can uh, put questions on the chat. I'm here checking what is what we have in the chat. You can put the questions in the audience. Um, I'm here checking on the chat if you do have questions. It's lunchtime, so it's difficult. <laughs> So while I don't see any questions here in the chat, I have one question, one question for you, Vitor. Uh, I saw in one of your slides that uh, in some years ahead, uh, bacteria will be the, 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 dominant. the dominance in the, the planet. And I was like very intimidated by that uh, idea. Do you think uh, that we will come to that? Or um, well, maybe course, we can have some action. This is a bit that. of science fiction, but uh, as, I, as I mentioned before, bacteria survived more than three and a half, four billion years because they are very adaptable to the conditions that drive in our planet. So in the ocean, we had an original ocean that was completely different from the one we have now in terms of temperature, in terms of chemical composition, in terms of light, UV radiation, etc. And bacteria and other smaller organisms were able to survive this, this uh, evolution. While other species and other groups like dinosaurs and other uh, species that probably we don't know because they did not leave fossil records, they disappeared. And so I'm not, I mean, dramatic and tragic in the in in this uh, image but i'm i'm pretty sure that bacteria will survive us because they are more adaptable and uh, of course we are adaptable we are as humans as, as a species we are adaptable but the problem is that the, the the climate and the environment is changing also very drastically so i believe that if we don't do if we don't take measures that drastically um, decrease this change in terms of the global temperature, we might face some problems in the coming centuries. Of course, it's not for us, but for the future generations. Okay, Vita. I'm having here problems with the, the Zoom. Maybe you can help me here. Uh, can you open the Batpapu here?
Não me entendo com este rato. Pois está-me a aparecer ali, mas eu não estou a conseguir abrir aqui. Sorry, technical problems here. Não estou a conseguir abrir aqui o bate -papo. Não me entendo com este rato. Is it possible to, to finish the, uh, the sharing of the, of the... Ah, yes, 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 you are right. Uh, yes. Foi-se embora o... Acabar de partilhar a apresentação. Eu não me entendo com este rato. Stop sharing the presentation. Yes. <laughs> the picture is lovely, but... <laughs> We cannot see that. I can, yeah, but I can come to here to see uh, the... That's it. Okay. I'm not... Ah, okay, okay, that's it. That's it. Uh, why only microplastics have only now the attention? Why only now? Why did we take so, so long? Well, because I think uh, plastics uh, now are more common in our coasts. Um, I would say that for the past decades, we saw an evolution in terms of the increase of the impact of the plastics. And we started also to have means to analyze microplastics before it was not possible. So I think it's a problem that is not from now because plastics are being produced since the, I would say the half of the last century. And of course, microplastics were there before, but we didn't have the means to uh, identify and quantify these plastics. So, I think that uh, the, the, the plastics problem is now an issue and that's why either at the European Commission or at other environmental fora, this has been uh, taking a lot of interest and uh, a lot of funding. Do you know what kind of materials the Project 3D has been using? Well, I think it has been using um, recycled materials. So The idea is to use recycled uh, um, rocks. I, I, I have not uh, the details on this project, but I can tell you um, where you can find that information if you want to send an email, and then I can send you the link of the project. Okay, well, people congratulate you for the nice presentation. Another point that has been um, here, um, Put it was related to the floor station. That's other an issue in the planet. It has not been mentioned. Uh, what do you think about the floor station? Well, uh, I was talking mostly about the oceans, of course, but there is deforestation of the oceans uh, because in the ocean we have two major problems. One are the, the prairies that uh, are very common in quite shallow areas and the seagrasses are very important in terms of productivity and in fact they are decreasing their occurrence and then the kelp forests which are the major macro algae which are also very important for the production of oxygen and for the taking up of uh, carbon dioxide and in both cases there are projects and we are involved in some of them that deal with reef water station, which means that we can produce this algae and these sea grasses in the laboratory and then reflow the state as we do in the forests uh, in the land, like with the pines. So this is a problem. I don't know if they were meaning the, the, the forests in the sea, but of course the forests in the sea are a major issue because they host a huge biodiversity. So the sea forests and the sea grasses are two main components of the ecosystems in the marine, especially in coastal marine environments, and they are also being taken into account when we have these projects of recovery of ecosystems. And it probably is also related to the sea rise because... Uh, uh, sea rise and sea temperature, sea yes. temperature rise, yeah, because many of these uh, kelp forests, they are adapted to cold waters, And when the water is warming up, they will move forward to the north. And so soon we will 
have no forests in, in terms of kelp because they are moving to the north. And the same happens, as you know, with fish populations. And I was thinking about mangroves as well, because if we the first uh, those kind of uh, um, seasides, uh, it's easier that uh, the, yeah, ma the mangroves water are, goes... are very important, not just in terms of uh, biodiversity, but also in terms of protection to the shore. Exactly. Because they, they protect from heavy uh, waves and it's 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 like it's and a so similar aspect to the dunes, the sand dunes that we have yeah. in our systems. Yeah. And erosion, coastal erosion in the seaside. So I don't believe we have oh coral reefs. Coral reefs. We don't, did not mention about coral reefs. Are also facing the anthropogenic impacts. Um, that is very true. That is, in fact, uh, two weeks ago I was uh, in a conference in Mexico and I was uh, I was snorkeling in coral reefs. And to my surprise, most of the coral reefs there were killed, were dead. And in fact, the rising of the temperature and especially the acidification causes the bleaching of the coral reefs. And the coral reefs are in danger a bit all over the world. When we think of coral reefs, we think mostly of the big reef in Australia, but there are coral reefs in different oceans, uh, inclusively here in Portugal. So we have to be very uh, attentive to this because coral reefs are also one of the high spots of biodiversity. Well, uh, we have here some dramatic questions like, is there any hope for our grandchildren? <laughs> oh, I think so. It's very yeah, dramatic I, I mean, scenario. I mean, the, the scenario is changing slowly, uh, but I, I think we are still on time. What we have to do probably, uh, we cannot uh, counteract the slow increase of the sea level because that will take much more time, but we can adapt to other changes. And what we have to do now is to adapt. If we cannot counteract, we have to adapt. And so we have to change probably uh, food habits. We have to start eating other things in spite of uh, uh, having and, and enjoying sardines and other fish. So we have to change our habits and we have to adapt, uh, not building in shoreline, uh, avoiding some, some type of exposure to uh, environmental uh, hazards, but uh, I'm sure that uh, our grandchildren will survive and will be very happy if we are starting now to take serious measures. And these measures are not taken only by governments, they are taken by all of us. So this is a collective effort. Yeah, and I think the decision depends on all of us on uh, exactly. taking the right decision and um... Exactly. trying to have the lowest impact on our decisions. Exactly. That's why ocean literacy is very important. So if you do not have any more questions, I think we can end up here. We don't have any more questions from the audience. So I thank you all for your time. I thank Vitor Vasconcelos for the nice presentation and have you all have a very nice one health, one health happy day. And we close the conference from here, from CIMAR. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.